Welcome to the first meeting video. The goal of this meeting is to give a biblical foundation for the missions work that your church participates in. We don't engage in missions simply out of a desire to help people, though that may be an initial motivator. We will certainly grow weary if we don't eventually ground the work we are doing in our call as Christians to live out our faith. So in this section, we look at God's love for the world and how that motivates us to love the world. The time to complete this section is about an hour, so plan to do travel detail discussions prior. If you have a time frame that must be shorter than an hour, one option is to just look at every other page as a group and ask participants to do the even pages on their own. You will still get an Old Testament discussion, a New Testament discussion, and a final thought even if you skip pages. As with all the sections, this material is not comprehensive. On some pages you will see references where you can find further reading on the topic that is given. If you have questions or would like more resources, feel free to contact me. The first section is on the Old Testament. On the first page, we look at God's missionary nature in the Old Testament. It is a common suggestion that God was not missionary in nature prior to Jesus. People might say, well, God was only interested in Israel, not in Israel sharing their faith with others. Walter Kaiser offers some challenges to that by looking at references in the Old Testament that point to an outward-focused faith. One of the passages often quoted uh, to begin showing God's care for the world is the Genesis interaction of Abram and God. Israel was blessed to be a blessing. When you get to a scripture, read it aloud and have different people lead reading these passages. After reading, ask the question listed and leave space for people to answer. It may take time for your team to coalesce, so silence should be welcomed. It's important to note here uh, that, that from the beginning, from Genesis, God was looking for Israel to care for those around her. It says, in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Later in the prophets, we get an image um, of Israel being a light to the nations. In this passage, there are many important words that describe God and God's actions, like salvation, deliverance, justice, comfort, joy, and gladness. If you want to dig more into the idea of light, it is an incredible motif in the Bible. So what other places in Scripture is light discussed? God's view of Israel is one of being a blessing, a light, and a hope for the world. At the bottom, you'll find many other passages that discuss the nations. A disclaimer, the term the nations get gets used uh, to describe many different things. It's used in the Old Testament, as you'll find, to talk about those who are not following God. In the passages listed, uh, you'll find references to the role of Israel with the nations, not the ones that uh, are as much about punishment of the nations, though these passages also exist. So there are 16 verses on the bottom there. So if you have eight people, give each person two verses. Have them look it up and write what the verse says about the nations. Then share the different ways that the nations is discussed through these verses. On page two, we look at another Old Testament story about missions, Jonah. Because this is a common story, have the team talk through the major points. For a great recap, you can check out the Bible Project's telling of the story, which you can find at the website jointhebibleproject.com or by going to YouTube. Though Jonah is definitely a missionary, he's a person going from their home to share the hope of God with another community, he's not a great missionary. Uh, he's probably a better example of what not to do. I mean, he doesn't want to go, and he complains the entire time. He's a host's worst nightmare when a group comes. An important question is how we avoid the mistakes that Jonah makes. After your group has answered, here are a few other thoughts. Assume that God is already at work in the place you're traveling to. And two, trust God's call, even when it doesn't make complete sense. The final verse in Jonah is a telling one, which is why we end with it. We often get focused on our comfort, whether physical comfort, expecting others to live like we do, you know, why is there no air conditioning? Or spiritual comfort, uh, expecting others to understand their faith in the same ways that we do. Why don't they sing hymns here? We did not plant the seeds of hope in the community we are visiting. God did. The mission of God, the Missio Dei, is God's. We are welcome to be a part of it, but it is not our mission. God is at work in the hearts of the people long before we get there and will continue when we leave. We get to be conduits of God's love. The bottom line, God cares about where you're going much more than you. So how are you called to live out that passion? Next, we move to the New Testament. In the New Testament, there are many places one can look at for missionary influence. I mean, Matthew 28, 19, and 20 is a common passage. Uh, Acts is all about the church sharing its message with others. A message that was more than spiritual salvation, but about creating communities that cared for the whole person. We don't have time to look at all of these passages, so we decided on just a couple. 
The first, uh, maybe not so widely used passage is from Galatians, and it's a great connection to the early, earlier Old Testament conversation between Abraham and God. What's beautiful about using the passage from Genesis with Abram is that Paul brings it up in a letter to the church in Galatia. Read the passage as a group and talk about its significance for missions. Here the story of God's love for the nation comes full circle. Acts is another great book, and Acts 1.8 gives a great view of what we are called to as Christians. The passage has a few main points. First, the Holy Spirit is important in our missions work. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to be witnesses. As the Church of God, we have a long history understanding the importance of the role of the Holy Spirit, but it sometimes gets overlooked in contemporary conversations. So take some time to talk about the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives as Christians. Second, we're called to be witnesses. What does the word witness mean? What does a witness do? In a court of law, what's the role of a witness? To testify to what they have seen, right? Our role is not to be God for people, but to testify to God's goodness in our lives. The verse does not say that we were sent to convince people, but to be witnesses. We share what the Holy Spirit lays on us and God does the changing of people. Third, our witness is to be in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Each of these locations has significance. For, for Christianity, Jerusalem was the center at the time of Paul's writing. One way to read this is um, that we are to be witnesses in places where Christi Christianity is prevalent. Another way is that we're to be witnesses in our homeland. Both of these are true. So what is your Jerusalem? It will be, difficult. It will be uh, very different for everyone. Judea is the area that encompasses Jerusalem. You can think of it as concentric circles out of Jerusalem. Or if Jerusalem is the city, Judea is a state. So what is your Judea? Judea and Samaria are listed together. They can kind of both be thought of as a state in that kind of an analogy. But it's important to know that Samaria is a place that people avoided. Roads were built so that people didn't have to walk through Samaria as they traveled to Galilee uh, in the north to Jerusalem in the south. The images people would have when they heard Samaria would mostly be negative. You know, I heard a ministry in downtown Indianapolis describe their location as Samaria. They were in a poor part of the town with an ethnically diverse uh, population. And there's a highway that goes around the city, which most people use to speed up their travel. This highway, as the ministry explained, was the way that people would go so they did not have to go to a difficult part of the town. They were the Samaria that was avoided as people traveled. What places represent Samaria for you? Finally, the call also reaches out to the ends of the earth. So what is the ends of the earth for you? How might God be calling you to be involved with being a witness in each of these locations? On the following page, we look at our story. The goal of this page is to bring some cohesion to the story that we've been hearing. We've looked at God's love for the nations and how we're called to be a part of that. And this looks more specifically at our story and how it relates to others. Now, it is a simplistic look, but it gives some major themes about how to talk about faith. First, we are all made in God's image. This is a vital place to start. Second, it's important to recognize that because of sin, brokenness entered the world, and there are four foundational relationships that are broken. Uh, there's brokenness between us and God, between us and ourselves, between us and others, and between us and creation. Each of these is important and brings a significant part of what Steve Corbett and Brian Ficker call our poverty. Poverty then is not simply about not having money, but it's about broken relationships. The image on this page is from the leader's guide of their book and the training material, Helping Without Hurting. It's fantastic material. Next, Jesus enters the world as the cure for the disease of sin. This is what makes reconciliation between the four broken relationships possible. Reconciliation is the term I use to talk about the work that is done of repairing our relationships with God, ourselves, others, and creation. The poverty of the world is not just physical, and it's not just spiritual. It is a poverty of our being that encompasses everything about what it means to be made in the image of God. Our call as followers of Christ is to be involved in the work of reconciliation. And it's not something that we do on our own. As we have seen, God is already at work. But through the life of Jesus and with the power of the Holy Spirit, we are given the opportunity to join God in that work. The final page asks the question, what's my story? If we're truly called to be witnesses, it's important to reflect on God's work in our life so that we have something for which to be a witness. 
Understanding our story doesn't mean that we have things figured out. We are all coming from very different backgrounds. But we can still look at where we, where we see God at work. Where has God been faithful to you? Where have you had to trust God recently? Where has a time, uh, what was a time when you felt far from God and what brought you back? Hopefully through the entire trip, your group will get to hear stories from one another. But this is a great time to start that practice of listening. Don't try and have people answer all the questions, but maybe invite each person to answer one of the questions. If you have time, it would be great to do this in a group. If not, split off into groups of two uh, with someone you don't know and share a story with them. Begin to get to know one another. Learn to accept your story so that God can use it to transform others. Thanks for listening and safe travels.